The current Pandora box landscape is absolutely dominated by 3A and clones. But today, we have the Alpha 3D Max from one more. Let's check it out. Get over here! Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribe. So this here is what arrived. It's the Alpha 3D Max, and it came with the box and the manual. Hello. Goodbye. So yeah, this is as cheap as you can get. I mean, it's basically a PDF printed out into A4 and stapled together. But at least it is a manual. Let's have a look here. Yeah, the specs. And this process is from 2015, and it's based on the RK3288. Video output is 720p, and it emulates all these systems. For those that care, Atari 2600s on here, and apparently it supports light guns and trackball. If you're not aware, Pandora boxes with trackball compatibility are pretty much non-existent without a lot of faffing. So if this one works out the box, it'll make a lot of people happy. Outside that, the manual does nothing but explain the options screen, which we'll check out later. So the shell of the box looks very similar to a Pandora box 3D. Feels pretty nice, it'll protect the board. Sticky labels on the top show us the firmware date. It's August 2023 and the Alpha 3D Max. Something we've not seen in a while is hot glue keeping the microSD in place. We've got the DC in, HDMI, VGA, 3.5mm audio jack, volume rocker, settings button, and two USB ports. Everything's in the usual positions, making an easy upgrade from an older box. To open up, there's four screws on the bottom, and the top comes right off. So here's the board. And on the right here, we have the usual Pandora box harness. This will be for Player 1 and Player 2 controls. And this connector up here is for Player 3 and 4, as if you need it. Very cool to have this on the board, ready to go. Other than that, we have a few more connectors. This one's probably video. And then there's these. Don't know, don't know. Don't know. Mono speaker. This is for the power switch. If you have one, take out the jumper and pop it in here. I think this one's for video as well. Let's check out that micro SD. Just gotta pick off this glue. Come on. We have a Lexar. First thing we should do is back it up. Now we can screw a box into the bar top. And the ports align perfectly. Let's see how long it takes to boot up. I'm back. Why do seagulls live by the sea? Because if they lived by the bay, they'd be bagels. Why aren't dogs good at dancing? They have two left feet. I bet you will like the next one. A man got hit in the head with a can of coke. Lucky for him, it was a soft drink. How much longer is this box going to take? Seriously, load times this long deserve a place in the Guinness Book of World Records. I am in there with my 3 meter trouser snake. Now that is ridiculous. Anyway, here's the games menu and it's pretty much like any other Pandora box. Select a game and you're in. Anyone could operate this. If you press the pause button, there's an in-game menu. We can either save or load state. And if you want to change the game, press the pause button again, then go to quick game. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Coming back to the games menu now. The 3D games are for the newer consoles. 2D's for MAME and the classic systems. A favorites list where we can add or remove games by the push of a button. A history list that shows us the recent games played. And a search menu. On the top they're separated by category. We've got the versus. Shooting. Puzzle. Action. Sports. Racing. Four play games. Light gun. And trackball games. Underneath that we have the systems such as Dreamcast, Atomic Wave and Naomi, N64, MAME, PSP, PlayStation 1, Super Nintendo, NES, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Mega Drive, FBA, and PC Engine. All of those work like filters. All we could do is simply type in the game we want to play. Easy peasy. Push the button on the back, we get the system settings screen. 
In here we can test our inputs. We have a simple button rebinder, and all of these are system-wide. You got coin settings, exit mode, auto exit, select mode, and graphic mode. This is the HD filter that we see on many Panera boxes. We can turn it on and off. This is how it looks without. If we turn it on, it tries to smooth out the image. For languages, we have English, Spanish, Chinese, Korean, and another Chinese. Going into game settings now, we can change difficulty and lives per game. Won't really work for the console games, but it should be okay for the older arcade titles. In edit games list, we can hide any games. So if you've got a dodgy game showing some nips, we can use this menu. And if you want to pay to play, we can alter these settings here. Other than that, we've got a few admin screens, but I think it's about time we check some games. First up, Arcade. In Street Fighter games, all buttons are where they're supposed to be. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Mouse Look 2, same speed as the arcade original. Outrun, all working good. Now onto some vertical games. 1942. Unfortunately, we don't get a switch to turn into tape mode. Battle the Craid. Sega Naomi. There's no glitches in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, but when there's a lot happening on the screen, it does slow down. Which was Striker 2. Now onto a Thomas Wave. King Fighters 11. And Metal Slug 6. Plays quite well until we get to this bit. Moving on to handhelds, here's Game Boy Color. Game Boy Advance. PC Engine.
Sega Mega Drive. Streets of Rage. Ah! Buttons are wrong! But even if the buttons are mapped incorrectly, all six buttons work in Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition. Here's some Dreamcast with Virtua Fighter Thrutabu. And some dynamite cop. Moving on to the Nintendo systems now, here's some NES. And if you want to play Bart vs. Space Mutants, don't play it on the NES, it's pretty terrible. Amiga for the win. Here's Mega Man X. But if we move on to Yoshi's Island, we can see graphical glitches showing us an issue with the emulator. Fortunately, this does play at original speed. Here's some N64. Slippy, watch out! Funky on your tail! Whoa! Help me! Thanks, Fox! I thought they had me. We all know the Achilles heel of a Pandora box. Killer Instinct Gold. So on this stage it runs quite well. But this one? Not so. PlayStation 1. And in each Tekken game, we have all the characters unlocked. But, no music. To get music for a Tekken game, we need to move to the PSP. And it's nice to see that they've used a new version of Puzzapa. No leg juggle here. But the downside to this is that on this Pandora box we can't play two-player PSP Tekken. Let's check a few more PSP games. It's Cars. And Burnout Legends with no song glitch. When it comes to three and four-player games, it is possible with this box Using a game controller in the USB ports, we can have players 3 and 4, but you cannot set them to players 1 and 2, so you need to use the Pandora harness. Turtles in Time does not have the level bug, so we can complete it. And this box also has 4 player games working out of the box from more systems, such as the Sega Naomi and the N64. Oh yes. Main games have samples included. And if you plug in a USB mouse or trackball, it works out of the box. Or well, if you plug in a keyboard, press tab, we can actually alter the MAME settings. But first let me play. Fully analog, works really well. Here's Centipede. Golden Tea Golf 2. Marble Madness Missile Command
Tempest. And Zombie Raid. The only way we could pump up is by using the arcade button. But if we plug in a keyboard, then push tab, we can rebind it to another button on the mouse or trackball. We tried the light gun controller from the Gun Max, and unfortunately it does not work with the same trackball games. We also tried the Gun for Err controller. While we could get it working, it wasn't accurate with this setup, as the Pandora box is set up for trackball or mouse. Maybe with a bit more faffing, we can get this one working. NBA Jam. The arcade version runs really well. We have easy access to dip switches. So we can change difficulty, have massive heads, and switch from competitive to co-op in NBA Jam TE quite easily. Marvel vs Capcom 2 comes with no characters unlocked, but if we switch in an EEPROM file, we can sort it out no problem. But how is this for adding games? It's not straightforward. We need to first copy over the ROM to the microSD, give it a little video preview, and then add the game to the database using the DB browser for SQLite. In here we can change which emulator is used, and we can also change the names if we need to. We tested for system latency, and it's pretty low for a Pandora box. Moonwalker has 5.5 frames, which comes to 91.66 milliseconds of latency. And Turtles in Time has an average of 105 milliseconds. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The Alpha 3D Max is a breath of fresh air. Finally, we have a Pandora box that's extremely customizable, has new emulators, and has full USB trackball support. Unfortunately, the button mapping needs work and USB controllers can only act as players 3 and 4. There's no two-player PSP games, and it takes a long time for it to boot up. So what do you think about this Pandora box? And didn't we just say it's customizable? So in the next few weeks, we'll have a release of Pandory Max. It'll be available for free on our GitHub, and is a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. At Team Pandory, we'll make video reviews, guides, and fixes to cheap arcade boxes like this one. If you want to help support our work, please jump on our Patreon. Or a simple like and subscribe will go a long way. Anywho, this has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! I'm back with a sandwich. What did I miss?